Hey guys, so we're gonna go ahead and look at that Evan and Anna car. So if Evan buys a new car that costs $23,740 and Anna buys the same new car in the hybrid version, her cost is $31,140. So Anna prepays for gasoline, so the cost for her car will always be $2.40 per gallon forever. Using the graph, which represents a combined city and highway driving annual fuel usage, write an equation that represents the exact cost for any amount of miles she drives. Be sure to define the variables you are given for the equation. So first of all, um, sixth period, I think this paragraph was missing from your problem um, until about Thursday morning. So go ahead and refresh if you don't see that. Uh, that's super important, you need that. So first of all, you're not going to write your variables from the graph. You're going to write your variables from the problem that's given. So we want to write an equation that represents the exact cost for any amount of miles she drives. So x is going to be the number of miles driven and then y is going to be the total cost of fuel. So go ahead and define those, define those variables. All right, now it says write an equation to model this situation. So really all we're doing is we're going to use that graph. The only reason that graph is there is to extract those ordered pairs and help us find out what the slope of our graph is. You can see that the y-intercept of that graph is zero. Um, but again, we're not writing an equation for that graph. We're just using that graph to tell us um, basically what that gallons per mile is. So if I go ahead and set up my slope formula, I can take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if I simplify that, I get 125 over 6,000, which simplifies to 1 over 48. Okay, so that's going to be the slope. So go ahead and type that in the slope box. Now it's asking me um, what the units are, so just know that y is gallons, and then x is miles. Okay, and these units are coming from your graph, which is where those ordered pairs came from, which is where these values came from, which is why we're using gallons and miles. So then it asks us um, to write the equation. So we still haven't quite done that. So remember that the equation is the total cost of fuel. So if you think about what the total cost of fuel is, the total cost of fuel is going to be um, y equals 1 over 48x because that's going to be the number of gallons. I kind of just put some notes in here for you. Gallons divided by miles times miles. So if you think what happens uh, when you multiply 1 over 48x, you're really going to be figuring out the number of gallons that you need because those miles will cancel out um, with that dimensional analysis. So you're ending up with gallons. Well now because she prepaid and we're looking for the total cost, so she prepaid those gallons at 240, now we're going to have to multiply that by 240. So if you type that into buzz, that should get you full credit for your equation. So this is going to represent the total cost of fuel because the cost of fuel comes from taking however many gallons you need times the, uh, times the cost per gallon, which in this case is $2.40. All right, so now the next part is asking us to determine the cost for Anna to drive 12,000 miles using her prepaid gasoline. So what you're gonna do is you're then going to take 12,000, because that X represents the miles, you're gonna place 12,000 into your equation, and that's going to give you the cost. So Anna's cost is $600. And you shouldn't be typing that dollar sign into bus, just the 600 will, will work. So now we can see that like Anna, it also prepays for gasoline, so the cost for the gas will always be $2.40 per gallon forever. Evan and Anna will each drive an average of 12,000 miles per year. Evan's gasoline car gets a combined city and highway average of 30 miles per gallon. Based on fuel costs only to the nearest whole number, how many years will it take Anna to recover the cost of her higher price that she, pay, that she paid for the hybrid compared to the cost of Evans driving his gas car? Okay, so we already figured out Anna's cost. This is just cost of gas. Okay, so now what we need to do is we have to talk about Evan. So we have to basically start over and we have to figure out what Evan's equation is. So understand that this 48 miles right here 
that's the miles per gallon. Okay, if I were to flip that over, I would end up with 48 over 1. And remember, our units were miles per gallon. So if this is telling me that Evan's miles per gallon are 30, as I think about my equation, I'm going to have one, y equals 1 over 30, because that's his miles per gallon, x times the number of miles. So that's going to represent the number of gallons that Evan is using. And again, we're going to multiply that by 240. So that right there is going to give me the total cost of Evan's fuel. So if he's also driving 12,000 miles, well now I'm going to plug that 12,000 in. Now I'm going to get that Evan's cost for gas is $960. All right, so now if we're trying to compare the two, we have to take their total costs in, into consideration. The fact that Anna paid $31,140 for her car. So the total cost is going to be her car, $31,140, plus the amount of gas that she has per year. So the amount of gas she has, it's $600, and we're going to go ahead and say that X is year. So we're in a new equation now. So we're bringing that X, and that X is going to represent the number of years it's going to take for and I should recover her higher um, price car. So then we'll do the same thing for Evan, and we're going to say, okay, he paid $23,740 for his car, but he's paying an additional $960 per year for his gas. So what we're trying to do is what's the break-even cost? So we want to know when does Anna equal Evan? What point did those two um, costs equal the same? So you just simply take these two equations and set them equal to each other. Oh, I'm running out of room. So, um, if you solve your equation, subtract your 23,740 from each side, you'll get 7,400. And then subtract your 600 from each side equals 360x. Divide by 360. So we have that x is 20.55 repeating. Um, just keep in mind that the directions are asking for the nearest whole number, so we're going to pop that up to 21 years. Okay, great job guys.